Costa Rica has more to offer than spectacular beaches. We spent two weeks camping in the Caribbean rainforests of Costa Rica. Just us, our dogs, and a sloth. We're here camping at Centro Manu, kind of like a conservation recreation area. Really great little spot. We're about 50 to 75 kilometers from the Caribbean coast. So it's definitely, we're feeling the more warmth, the more mugginess, um, which is crazy because we're only about 60 kilometers from our last camp. And there we had our warmer jackets on in the evening but is cooling down at night, so it's not too bad for sleeping. Um, we've even put a little bit of blanket on, so yeah, it's, it's good. Really nice green space and lots of like very jungly here. They do night tours. Um, there's a lot of snakes in the area, so they say keep your dogs close. We haven't seen any snakes, which is great, but uh, we also didn't go looking for them in the jungle at night either. So let's go take a little look around. So they have a basketball court um, which they've also put some soccer nets on. And then as you peer through the soccer area, there is a little, well, they call it a little natural pool. And they say that you can swim in here. Mm, probably not the place that I want to swim. And then overlooking the pond, they've got a little cabana area with some hammocks. So a nice spot just to come and sit and listen to the water. It's really nice and quiet here, really just sounds of the jungle, uh, lots of birds, insects. There's owls in the evening. They come out and you can see them and they're hooting away. We've stayed here for three nights. There was one other set of campers that came the one night and then it looked like there was some camp counselors that came and looked like they were like setting up and kind of doing some work getting ready for the season. We think that there's probably like kids groups that come through here and do tours and um, spend the day kind of as a school activity. Here's our camp. There wasn't a fire pit when we got here, but there was all these rocks. And so we asked if we could make a little fire pit and they said no problem. So set up our own little fire pit, which was great. So in here is like the common use area. It's really close. They have like a kitchen, like a full kitchen over to the left. Uh, that's not open for campers, but like staff go in there. So when they have groups come and in the back, there's bathrooms and showers. They are really clean. The showers were warm, not hot, but warm, which is all you would need here. It's definitely warm enough. And then through the back here, there's some cabins. Watch out for spider webs. We were tracking a spider through here the other day. So here's the little cabana area. If you wanted to rent a little cabin, here's their interactive board of um, creatures that you can find in Costa Rica and which ones are in this area. So these are the, the owls of Costa Rica. Not necessarily all of them here in this part. And then these are the snake areas. And we did see some people come the first night we were here and go for a night tour. And they had like the snake hook out to go like looking for snakes. That's a hard no for us. We know that there's all kinds of wild animals out in the jungle and snakes and things that bite and sting, but these are not things that uh, we specifically want to go hunting or looking for. I, we can appreciate that they're there, um, but don't need, to, don't need to go looking for them and just cautious, you know, if you're reaching into a wood pit or if there's like longer leaves or like underneath trees. Those are not, not places that we're trying to get into. And then as you move through the back here from our camp, there's another little area. They were back here doing some work, getting some things fixed up. So they've got a few little areas kind of in the works to potentially like run some activities. And then you can just keep on going through the back and the Sandero El Bosque. There's some hiking trails. So kind of funny story, as you know, both Chris and I are learning Spanish. When we drove in, we saw this sign and both of us right away were like, area for juices. We're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then once we got settled in and came and take a look, we realized it was not like a little juice bar, it's a game area. So they have a uh, pool and ping pong. So we played, uh, we played both. We played some ping pong and we played some pool. Uh, I would say our ping pong was more just trying to keep the ball going and not hit it way in deep into the jungle. But for those of you who 
may or may not be learning Spanish. Uh, the word for juice is jugo, and the word for games is uh, juegos, and they're very similar. And uh, yeah, when we, when we first saw the sign, we both right away thought juice, and then we realized we both had it wrong, and it was uh, the word for games. We absolutely love our rooftop tent. It packs up so quick and easy. These are similar to lychee, but I guess they're not actually lychee. They're rompatons, uh, is what we found online. Um, but they also called them something different at the at the fruit stand. So I don't know if that's just like the Spanish word for romp rompaton, um, but they're very similar to lychee. They're in the same family, but they're super delicious. So this is how you cut into the fruit. You're just gonna use a paring knife score it around the edge. Kind of try to get in the middle as best as you can. And then the top will pop off. So this one, I didn't quite get it in the middle. I don't think I can squeeze them out. So I just use my finger, peel back just a little bit more. And then he's ready to eat. So this is our first raw cacao experience. So if you're not familiar, this is this is what they make chocolate from. But not like this. But they say so, that you can nibble on the white stuff that's around the seeds. Yeah, and then the seeds inside has caffeine and chocolate. Yeah, and I think you're supposed to roast them. Roast them or dry them out and grind them and that makes the chocolate. I'm gonna try it. I don't know. It's kind of disgusting looking. Really slimy. But uh sweet, actually, it's really sweet. Like too sweet or good sweet? There's not much to them. They're just like sweet slime. How do you describe it? Sweet slime is pretty accurate, but it's good. Like I like it. So that's what the pit looks like, de-slimed. So I'm gonna have another one. These are supposed to be full of antioxidants, even not like the chocolate, but the, the sweet slime around the fruit is supposed to be full of antioxidants as well. So the bananas are finally going yellow. Some are a little green, but Tobe likes them a little green. And uh, they peel pretty decent. So the little tiny, little tiny bananas.
It tastes really good. He's a citrus hound. He is a citrus hound. And we've already discovered he loves lemons and limes. Pinnell, she's like, absolutely not. Okay, that's all you get. <laughs> what, Mr. Dick? That's the every <laughs> We're driving along. I'm not sure where we are right now, but somewhere in Costa Rica. No. Yeah. So we were driving along <laughs> uh, this highway, major highway. We saw these signs saying Panban, Cocida, or Co. Panban, I think, to Coca. So uh, I haven't had lunch, so I pulled over and we got some pan bun. So it was uh, two mil or two thousand cologne for the cookie. Mm -hmm. Galetas. Galetas, and it was three thousand cologne for the pan bun, mm -hmm. and that works out to five thousand total, and about ten dollars got us uh, all this stuff. Yeah, so let's check it out. These are the the galettas, or the cookies, like they're they're huge. Like that's, that's the cookies, like the whole size of my hand. And there's four in there and they smell, um, there's definitely some cinnamon in there. They smell like gingerbread cookies. Yes, yes, that is what it smells like. And then our pan bon, so here is our pan bon. So we're not gonna eat this while we're driving, but we're definitely gonna get into those those galettas while we're driving to our next campsite. Chris is going for his first bite. Okay, going for the first bite. Yes, I'm driving and eating a cookie. We can eat cookies on this road. It's pretty straight and it's like a highway. It's not like twisty journey. It's really good. Definitely gingerbread in there, like gingerbread-ish. There's a different little taste to it though, like. It's like a gingerbread with a twist. Mm hmm So. And I'm thinking the coca is maybe, I think maybe they're made with coconut flour, mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Could be, yeah. And they're not like crazy sweet. Like they're, they're good. Like sometimes I find cookies are too sweet. Mm-hmm. The verdict is, I like it. It's really good. I already had a bite of mine and it's delicious. We spent a night, it's morning, uh, at this cool little spot uh, called Caribbean Rainforest Sloths. And it's just like a small little camping spot. They also do some tours around the gardens. Uh, you can watch the birds, see some sloths. We spent our morning uh, having our coffee, watching a sloth and a ton of birds, um, just eating papayas and bananas. Uh, which they set out for the, the birds and the animals to come, which is really, really cool. So there's place maybe here for like two vehicles, maybe three. Um, there is a big area in the back, but you couldn't get a vehicle there because the way the garden is, but it could be uh, for tents. So it could do a couple vehicles and a couple of tents. Um, it's been pretty quiet the day we were here. One couple showed up and they did a little tour and saw some sloths. We didn't do the tour, but we saw a sloth this morning in the tree right outside. So they've got this nice little area. Um, bathrooms, place to wash your dishes, and then you can come in here if it's raining. Just for like cooking, sitting, hanging out. And on the back side of this wall, uh, the really nice man that is the caretaker for this place, Alejandro. He lives there, super friendly, really helpful with anything that you need. There's one puppy that lives here, in Pado. This is where the magic happens, right here, the bird watching area. And Alejandro puts out bananas and fresh papayas for the birds, but um, there's like so many birds here this morning, uh, just nibbling and eating. Maybe they're all, maybe they're all full, so they, won't be too, too many, but uh, nice, enjoyable morning coffee, sitting out and watching the animals. And up in this tree, right behind the birds, is where the sloth is currently. Um, he's up there, he's sleeping, you can't really, barely even see him, and we wouldn't have seen, we wouldn't have noticed that he's there when he's sleeping. They're really, really hard to find. They almost look like a curled up cat in a tree. Jose, 
he came over to us and he's like, hey, hey, there's a there's a perisoso, a sloth in the tree. And it was like the perfect time to see him. He was like stretched out, doing his morning routine. He was like hanging upside down, scratching his ears, scratching his head. He was a little bit awake and active. And then like, boom, he was like, okay, I'm done with that. Did a little sit up and just hanging in the tree um, and hasn't really moved. But cool little spot. Uh, we're just spending one night here. Um, there's quite a few little spots around here that we want to check out. Uh, we're going to move on today uh, to a spot that's really close by. So I better uh, bid you adieu and I will go help Chris get everything packed up. Adios! So we're here camping at Los Centamales Steakhouse and Camping Area. Uh, this is a place that's really off on the countryside along the Rio Frio, means cold river. So the river is cold, but the temperature here is quite warm, quite humid as we're in the rainy season. And this is the steakhouse here. Uh, really beautiful at night. There's lots of like little twinkle lights and they have great food. We enjoyed a really nice meal here, um, a shared plate. This place has been so relaxing and so nice. The owner, Arian, is super friendly. Uh, when we arrived, he picked some fresh lychees or uh, rabatans, as they're called here, from the trees. And we've enjoyed lots because there's always some falling. And one day we had fresh coconut water from his coconut trees. There is an avocado tree here. Um, we got a couple avocados, they're not ripe yet. There's tons of guava trees um, in back by our camp. Tigger and Penelope have been enjoying fresh guava every day. Tigger, so many, like we have to go around the camp and just like toss them away from the car because you would just eat too many. But there's room here for, there's definitely three camping spots. Um, and then there's like one shared little cover area that's got electricity and they have like a sink and water. So really nice. We had our hammock up in here earlier. And then here's where we got our car parked. And then across the way, is where you could have another camper. Uh, we met some really nice people. Uh, they were the only other people who camped here one night, a couple from the Netherlands. They're super friendly and we enjoyed a couple of beverages in the evening and we played skip bow with them. And then it was pouring rain the next morning. And so we invited them over, they had some coffee with us and unfortunately they had to pack up in the rain, which is terrible. And then over here, there is another covered shelter and they actually, it's hard to see, but they have a rooftop tent up in the shelter. So I think that potentially could be rented at some point that someone could stay there. But this is a little, um, well, they call it a little mini farm. So not only is there lots of fruit trees, but there's a couple of cows. Uh, there's, well, we thought there, there are goats. Um, we thought some other animals were like, are those goats or are they sheep? But there's sheep, they're gonna hide in the back. So sheep right across from our camp and you can hear the roosters. They're crowing away. Uh, they, uh, they have, I don't know, probably like 30 chickens. Uh, a couple of times, like the roosters got the gate open. So uh, we uh, had to chase some chickens back in. Check out these coconuts. Um, the camp spot we're staying at, uh, the owner spoiled us. He brought us some fresh coconuts this morning. So we're having a little coconut water and he brought us some uh, rabatans, which are similar to lychee fruit last night. And there's guava trees all around. The dogs have been like enjoying guava. Tigger's been out of the car so much, just foraging. Yeah, it's been really great. so much tastier than the coconut water that you're going to get in a can or a bottle. This morning I was just looking to clean up our fridge a little bit and we had some leftover lazy lasagna and I decided to turn that into kind of a huevos rancheros if you will. So it was a little broken pieces of lasagna noodles instead of tortillas and then it's already got the tomato sauce in there and like onions and mushrooms and there's some zucchini, so then I just added in the eggs and a little extra cheese and some fresh onion. Looks pretty delicious. We're gonna give it a try. We're getting ready to move on to our next location, which is about 
16 kilometers away? 20 kilometers away? 20. 20 kilometers away and this spot is along the river so we'll probably do a little bit of swimming. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next amazing adventure. Grocery shopping in Costa Rica. Where to shop, what's available, and what our grocery bill was for one week and one month.